Elf, stop being dramatic. <laughs> What's going on, Collectibles? Friends, back again. It's been about a week. I missed you guys. How has everybody been doing? It is another beautiful day here in North Carolina. We're going to talk today about how we need some different comic book YouTubers. I will dive right in. Stick around. All right, friends, topic of the day, comic book YouTube. Let me first say I really enjoy a lot of comic book YouTube. But I think what kind of prompted the video is I see a lot of similar type content, not a lot of innovation in the comic book YouTube world as far as different topic ideas. And you do get a lot of the dealer point of view. And I think that's the big thing is you're getting kind of the dealer point of view at shows, or I own a local card shop, and so here's my point of view on this, that, or the other thing. And some of them do a really nice job, and it does give you insight into that side of the table. What's going on at the card show, negotiating with customers, you know, things that you're seeing, trends, and that sort of stuff. Top 10 lists, a lot of different channels doing the Key Collector comic book or the Go Collect, kind of just reporting that data, which I, I enjoy that. I do actually this similar type stuff, over on my other channel, Sports Card Dad, I'll throw those in as well, talking about sports card prices moving up and down. So I do understand it, and I enjoy seeing those price fluctuations, especially because I'm targeting different books, and I can see like, okay, well, that book has actually gone up or it's gone down. It helps me make more informed buying decisions. The ones that offer the census numbers, the increase, decrease on that, if you're able to track that, that's the stuff I'm mostly interested in these days. I've talked about it at nauseum, and I'll continue to talk about the supply side of collectibles, especially when we're looking at pop culture type stuff, and even in graded comic books, which for the most part, if you're going back to golden age, it's a pretty established hobby as far as collecting, speculating in, in those items. But what we're seeing now is a massive third-party grading boom, and you're seeing especially a lot of the 80s, 90s, and forward, the newer type stuff, finding out that, you know what? There's actually quite a bit of that out there, still out there, that's ungraded, which of course is a vulnerability for us buyers that are thinking about, should I buy at this price? Should I buy at that price? Well, if supply keeps going up and demand doesn't keep up with it, what does that mean? Prices moving downward. So again, we've got a lot of great dealer perspective, content that I don't see a lot of, and maybe you guys can point me in this direction, but kind of more on the other side of kind of long-term holders, you know, comic book collectors, why did you buy that particular key? What about that book made it special? Or was it just kind of like, hey, I feel like, you know, it's it's an underpriced key book and I wanted to get it at this particular price. That could just be the reason and that's perfectly okay. But I like the stories. I like the stories behind books. I'm going to tell a story today and we're going to look at the Spawn 1, the black and white, the variant version that came out in 1997. Of course, the one that was mass produced that sold what, 5 billion copies, 5 million copies was the Spawn 1 going back to 1992. I had that book in 1997. I was moving out of books as I was 16 in 1997. So I didn't know about this copy until I was an adult. And then just kind of seeing how cool the cover was and then that Todd McFarlane has signed a fair amount of these books. They're still fairly low on the census report. Finding one in a good grade that's still kind of hanging in there as far as condition goes and then having it signed by McFarlane. And I was specifically looking for the yellow ink. I like the, the yellow label. Black book, kind of the bumblebee look of, of this particular book. But for me, Spawn was a whole thing when I was a kid. Image Comics really exploded when I was 10, 11 years old. And I remember getting, you know, Young Blood 1 and Pit Number 1, those early image books, Spawn 1. And I bought, I mean, religiously every single month, the same way I got the Beckett magazine, the card for card prices. I got those Spawn issues as they came out. And I just remember the illustrations just pop off the page. I mean, just so different than kind of what we had seen in comic book illustrations before. And, and Todd McFarlane, of course, just being a hobby legend, his story is something of legend, just kind of growing up in Canada from nothing really, and the drive that he had, the rise, the fall, the rise again. I really hope that he finally gets his Spawn movie going because... That 90s Spawn movie, and you know, say what you will about it, I feel like a lot of these movies, the Super Mario Brothers movie that they made in, in the 90s was awful, but there's so much potential if you did the, a Spawn movie series, right? They could do a whole trilogy. There could be a whole universe with, with Spawn. And so I hope that eventually 
it takes off because there's so many kind of cool elements to it. It would need to be a rated R movie or TV series, however they're going to do it. And I want the live action. I don't want the animated series, although that was pretty cool, you know, going back when they did the animated series. But the characters, the good versus evil, the heaven and hell, you know, there is just kind of a cool storyline that really grabbed me going back to the early 90s, even as a kid, even as an 11, 12 year old that got into comic books during that time. And of course, it was part of that kind of comic book boom, Wizard Magazine every month. You know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And so owning that copy as well as Malibu Sun number 13, this is of course kind of that first cover. They handed these out, I believe, going back in time to where this was a promotional type magazine that they had sent out to just promo upcoming stuff. And what's cool about it is, of course, you see Spawn is written here. That's how the how the titling was going to be. And then Todd McFarlane kind of changed that last second to what I consider to be the iconic titling, the writing, the font, if you will, you know, behind the Spawn comics. But it's just stuff like this. So you go back to that 80s, 90s nostalgia that gets all of us, I think. You know, for a lot of us, the 80s and 90s represents a time that was just a lot more innocent and simple. It feels like it's pre-internet days. You know, you didn't have information at your fingertips. You actually had to talk to people. You actually talked on a telephone. It wasn't just all texts or, or whatever, you know. You actually sent people faxes, you know. I mean, it was just different. So I think a lot of us, I'm, I'm going through my midlife crisis, obviously, about to turn 43. And it's good to, of course, enjoy the present, but also to appreciate the characters, the comics, the collectibles that were born out of those times. So I think it would be fun to hear from kind of the whys behind people are buying different spec books, whether they're speculating or just collecting a particular character. Are you a Wolverine collector, or an X-Men collector, are you a Spider-Man collector? You know, everyone's got reasons, you know, for doing different things. What is it that gets you, gets you excited? And also, have you consolidated? You know, I know a lot of people, you know, they got back in maybe going back a few years. I got back into the hobby in 2018. And you get in for different reasons and your collecting tastes change over time. So when you got in, maybe it was three or four years ago, you're buying a particular book or series or whatever character. And maybe three, four, five years later, it's completely moved around. And I've, I've done that too with a lot of my collectibles. What are those stories? I want to hear kind of the collecting slash speculating slash investing in quotation marks journey of people that are on the other side of the dealer table. One guy I want to shout out again, I made another video about Sticky Goose Comics. The thing I like about this guy is an emphasis of focus on the entertainment part of the hobby. You do get a lot of kind of dry, you know, this is the top 10, this, that, or whatever. I like when people just fire off their personalities and let it flow and make jokes, make self-deprecating jokes about themselves while also, you know, making jokes about other people. That is how kind of the world turns, and we don't have a lot of that now. You know, comedy has gotten a little bit weird these days where you can't say this or you can't say that. And, you know, I like Sticky Goose coming out and just kind of doing his thing. The recent video that he did, I think it was like, why I'm the, the, worst, the, the worst guy in the hobby or something. He's wearing a wig, and he's playing a part. He's playing a character. He's going to do that to rile people up and get engagement, but also just to see what those reactions are. And I am sure, I've never talked to him before, but... He probably enjoys making that goofy style content. It's stuff that I also want to try to kind of add more of in both of my channels because I do like giving the informational type stuff, but I also like just having something dumb that's thrown in to throw people off. School is closed. It's a holiday, you dumbasses. Whoa. We can't forget, even when we're very serious about our collectibles, the world outside of this world is much more serious, and this is just supposed to be fun for, for all of us. It's just supposed to be a good time. And I think we need to focus more on that. I'm going to try to do more of it. I already do, but I'm going to try to do even more of that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, my friends. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.